they really excited. I'm actually going to be talking about a, uh, um, a conversation about podcasting, an angle that I'm really excited about that I really look forward to sharing. And yes, uh, Joe Rogan and I are, uh, to me, the king of podcasters, our cousins, his grandfather, uh, his maternal grandfather is the brother of my paternal grandmother, their brother and sister, or grandparents is really what that is. So there you go. So what we're going to talk about is what makes uh, your uh, podcast unique. And I'm really big into guests, uh, having great guests and really great storytelling. So uh, what makes a podcast unique is what we're going to be talking about. And I look forward to your questions. Please feel free to put them into the chat. A little bit about myself, a, a television producer, a, a two-time Emmy nominated television producer. I've done talk shows from Geraldo Montel, uh, Maury Povich, Who's Your Daddy, uh, to many, many television pilots, um, one with Bob Saget. Um, I ran an industry talk show with Peter Goober. My guest was Steven Spielberg. That was super cool. And um, have uh, many stories to tell, which is why we have our podcast, Front and Center which I'll tell you about in a little bit. Um, but back to the beginning, if you have a podcast already, hopefully that I will give you something to put some new energy or a new way of looking at your podcast. And if you're starting to think about podcasting, <clears throat> You're starting to think about podcasting. Um, hopefully that I will provide you some structure to consider in order to get going. So back to the beginning, um, we're going to talk about the breakdown of a show, preparation, not perfection, which I think is the number one reason per, uh, podcasters actually don't start um, podcasting as they're too worried about the perfection part of it. And then the focus on performance we'll get to towards the end. So why start a podcast? I think there are a lot of really great reasons. Um, I'm a big believer um, as the founder of TV Guestbert, that it is a really great way to amplify your message. Um, it is also a fantastic way to build a network, both for people who are watching your show, but also the guests that you have on, which is really critical to giving them a really great guest experience within the container of the podcast that you are putting out there. Also, um, one of the other benefits for it is a micro-contenting to your audit audience. So no matter what, how niche your industry is, you can find an audience and build on that by using a podcast. And I think the recent statistics say that only like 25% or 27% of the, of, um, of podcasting right now is actually, um, audience is have taken to it, which means that there's a lot of growth opportunity within the world of podcasting. Challenges, of course, are there are lots of ideas and not knowing which one to start with or do next. Um, and then, of course, the differentiating um, yourself in a crowd of uh, a market. And then, of course, how to get listeners um, to create engaging content. So um, we'll, we'll address some of those along the way. But front and center is uh, going along with the line that I just shared. Front and center is uh, our is our podcast. We do a broadcast podcast. So we um, architecturally we tape it for television and we cut the uh, the content down to podcast capacity and then we cut it down to micro capacity for social media sharing. We do ours uh, broadcasted out of the iHeart uh, Radio Studio in. Um, Burbank, California. And the reason we decided to start a podcast for the exact reason is I found that there were there these really great micro content stories about behind the scenes in the industry, like indirectly, peripherally related. Um, and I wanted to share those people who make a really big impact that we don't necessarily know about who have their hands on things, which is great for somebody like myself, who's a television producer or a background person um, helping people come forward. So our focus is less on the technical and more on creating engaging content. I find that if we have creative, uh, engaging content, then we can be forgiving around the technical aspects of production, which keep a lot of people um, hostage to wanting to do this like perfect mega production. I think if the story is there and the content is good, we can be a little forgiving about the technology and the audience will find you. So types of podcasts, just styles, something to consider, or maybe you're already doing this, but there's the interview style, which is usually the typical uh, podcast style where you interview a guest. Then of course, there's a narrative where um, NPR is really good at doing this, or where they, they, they do a narrative around a story that they're, they're, that they're um, portraying, which is really well done. Uh, there's a magazine, which it's kind of like a narrative story, but it's, uh, you can also be cut with clips. 
Then there's documentary style podcasting. And then there's, of course, nonfiction, um, which is uh, uh, which is the genre that we are all dealing with um, at this time. So what is your idea for a podcast? What type topics or themes do you want to cover? What message do you want to do you want listeners to leave with? And if you have many ideas, which one inspires you the most? Which one gets you the most excited? So for what topics or themes do you want to cover, I think is really important because that to me is the genesis of the guest building, the guest mining part of podcasting. And then what message do you want listeners to leave with? That can be for your overall show. That should probably part, be part of your mission statement, but it also should be per show. What is the message that you want to leave listeners with? We just did a, a show with Avery Mann, who is the founder of SOS. And I knew him from my talk show days at the Geraldo Rivera show because he was with, uh, he was the publicist for John Walsh. And he also worked at the um, uh, National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. So one of my beats as a talk show producer was really to cover um, missing children's stories. So I did a, a recent interview with him which was a compelling guest. Here we are like 20 years later in our career. He's got his own company about educating parents and protecting them from child uh, kidnapping and, and abduction. But what the answer to the question of what message did I want to leave listeners with is I wanted to leave listeners with how, how prevalent child abduction, child trafficking actually is and what precautions people needed to be aware of and that was what I wanted to leave listeners and how it fit into my overall topic of front and center was that Avery um, and I both have been working behind the scenes in, in television for a long time. And he particularly had devoted an entire career and uh, on this topic through the medium, of course, of television. So that was what I wanted to leave listeners with by inviting Avery Mann on as a guest for the show. So there we go. Let's see here. Okay. So the four steps to a secret successful podcast interview. Secret number one. Okay. We just did that. Develop the four steps here, the development. So these are the four steps to, this is what I call the architecture for putting together a show. There's a development, which we just started talking about, the taking the ideas from concept to fully defined. Then of course, it's a pre-production, which is the task list that we need to do to put in place to create an optimal recording. Some of us will just do audio podcast recordings um, and others of us are doing video audio podcast recordings. And then of course the production, which is the actual uh, event. This is a production we're doing right here, right now for Podcast University. And, um, and then of course the post-production, which is refine the show, make it, come to, uh, make it come to life. So that's where we go with that. So learn the breakdown of a show. Play forward, right, there we go, here we go. Development. One of my most, uh, what's my, one of my favorite parts of show is the development of the show. So the components of developing a show, of course, is the introduction of the show, the introduction of the guest, the actual interview or the content, and whether or not you have ads, and then the exit, the grace of an exit, of making a really great um, exit on a show, I think is really, really good. And you want it to be flattering towards your guest. So to develop your show idea, once you have your show idea, I like to brainstorm many topic areas which whether, whether it be the stories of movies, clips, guests, topics that relate to your, your episode, and then build your guest list around the content. So what I see a lot of podcasters do is they see someone that they want to have an interview with, they want to talk to on a podcast, and they're like, hey, you'd be a really great guest as a pod on this podcast. And that becomes the genesis of why they invite to have the guest on the show. But what they usually miss in that form of thinking about producing a podcast is well, what's the show? So this way of putting the show first and then filling it out with the best guests is allowing the guests to carry the content of the show. Instead of having a show around a guest, sometimes doesn't have any really engaging content for a listener to come to. I, I, I liken it to listening to somebody's phone conversation. 
it's not really fun. And with video, like to watch someone on a phone conversation, have a really intimate conversation with someone fun that they think is fun, isn't necessarily engaging or inviting to the third party. So picking your guests, think about the people you want to meet and interview, of course, in your, your podcast living room. So here we go. Preparation, not perfection is secret number three. Here we go. Okay, pre-production. Decide where you are going to set up your show, whether it's a garage, a home studio, office, a rental. Um, rent a studio space in a recording studio, which is also one way to do it with an um, in-house engineer is about 100 to $200 an hour. Um, there's also simpler ways to do it. And Zoom, of course, has made podcasting super, super easy and very affordable. And if you do it for less than 40 minutes and a podcast says sit down, it's still free. So when booking guests, consider logistics, communication, and then the pre-interview. I'm a big, big fan of the pre-interview, and I'm going to show you why. So guest logistics. Is it a physical interview in person, which is what we often do on front and center, not currently, but we often do um, in-person physical interviews, which is a whole type of logistical coordination. Or is it going to be Zoom or Skype, which is a communicating of time and um, technology? Or is it going to be over the phone, which is also a great way to record an audio uh, interview? And obviously, it will be the travel to guests, which will be the physical interview. Be sure to send clear instructions and, all te and tell all tech before production. So the way we communicate, and this is how my company, TV Guestbirds, um, TV Guestbert communicates with our guests because we book guests on all sorts of media, hopefully maybe your podcast at some point, um, across the country, across the world. So we communicate very specifically. We, we do confirmation emails that would include, or in inquiries. It's an inquiry when we're asking. It's a confirmation when we're locking. So in an inquiry, we will include the date, the time, and the time zone, which is very, very a big deal in this day and age, especially if we're um, telecasting um, our our. Our, our coordinations. Um, parking information, of course, if it's a live in, 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 in person interview, which is very important for people like us when we're in California. Parking is a very, very important information. And it's not something you want a guest to figure out on the fly. Dial in information if it's on the phone, tech information, guest speaking points and questions. So I'm a big believer in getting and receiving speaking points from a guest, not sample questions. And you're going to find out why in a moment. But to answer this here about communicating with guests, we also put the airing information. Where does the show air? How does it air? So here in our little booking confirmation, we've got Dr. Jeanette Yaffe. She's our guest expert, and we're booking her on Fox 5 um, more Las Vegas, the television show. But of course, it could be your podcast. We put the show producer in and what the topic is, the when, and then um, will it be Skype ready for control room? And then there's going to be um, tape time, the length of the tape. Um, there's a disclaimer. Sometimes that breaking news will cancel a guest last minute. Then we put the Skype information as follows and what we're asking the guest. So that is uh, because what you want is your guest who is already so busy to only have to find all their information in one email and not have to piecemeal conversations and strings of emails together in order for them to figure out what the data is of what they're committing to to put on a calendar. We don't want to do that to our guests. You want a really great guest, you give them all the information information. So here's the pre-interview, which I think is so critical. Um, and most, many, many people don't take the time to do this. So I like to conduct a pre-interview at least one to two weeks before the uh, recording date. And I like to focus on the storytelling. So I do my research before the call, but I, what I do on the call is I listen carefully. And what I'm looking for is more engaging topic. There's the stuff that I can find out about a guest from the back of their book cover or their Wikipedia page or videos on them, but everybody else can find that too. So that's not making my, my podcast or my interview any more interesting than what's already out there. So when I do that, I have received the speaking points by initiating a booking inquiry. I've asked them to give me speaking points on this topic. So I go through the speaking points and I'm not looking to have a real interview. I'm just really looking to mine, mine, mine what are the stories, mine what makes them special, mine what value I'm going to be offering my audience about this topic provided by this guest that's going to make it unique and interesting. 
So I focus on the storytelling and I get the best out of the guest. And I don't necessarily say to the guest, this is what we're going to talk about, or this is what we're going to talk about. I just make my notes because that's my job as the host. Good TV producers always do a, a pre-interview. My TV guest experts know this in all cases. But if we're doing our own podcast, I think this is a worthy, hey, get on the phone, hear them, hear their style, hear their cadence, just do a real good listening because the best stuff for your interview is going to come from your pre-interview. And one note I'm going to say on that in, in talk shows, I've produced a lot of talk shows, obviously in my um, career, we would put the guests in the green room before the prior to the show. And we wouldn't let the guests talk about the topic of the show to anybody, makeup artists, other guests in the room. Like, why are you on the show? Oh, I'm on the show because I'm here to talk about, we don't let them do that. We tell them not to, because the expression for us producers was we didn't want a good show to happen in the green room without an audience because a guest will not repeat a good show. And so when you're doing the art of doing a pre-interview is not to get the show to happen there because the guest will most likely not repeat this, the same information. You have to prompt them, but it's to get an idea of where their real good strengths are or what are the nuggets that you're going to be able to pull out during the show. So that's the trick to a pre-interview there. Leaving a digital imprint. So preparation is key because you are leaving a digital imprint in this uh, 2020 age um, that is impossible to control or erase. So we do say be prepared and not perfect. Again, that's why that pre-interview is giving you as a host, but especially giving the guests the best shot of being a really great guest on your, po your podcast. So a couple tips, um, practice, practice on the microphone to desensitize yourself to the sound of your own voice. How many of us like our own voices? We hear it, we're like, whoa, <laughs> very, very strange feeling. Also, if we're working on our computer cameras, we have to note eye line as we're, as we're right here. Um, and then as even as I look at my notes and my PowerPoint that I'm sharing with you, I'm doing my best to stay focused on the camera lens because even though it's completely mechanical and you're not in front of me, I'm doing my best to stay consistently engaged with you um, while you're here, because that's my offering and appreciation of your time to be here. So broadcast podcasts for us as a company, the way we do our podcast show, we do, we hire professional hair and makeup and, um, and we understand what shot markers are, where eye lines are, where the camera is going to be, because we're not, we don't necessarily always do off the camera. And I mean, I'm kind of going a little fast. So feel free to ask me in the chat if you hear something here that you'd like me to elaborate on. It's kind of giving you a big broad stroke here, getting into the guest part of our conversation. Focus on the performance, production and post-production. That's my team from front and center, my co-host, Philip Andrew Barb, and then the back of the head of Stephanie Kobe in there. And we're actually going through the speaking points. I'm actually briefing them the same way I would brief a guest. I'm like, okay, Phil, this client, this guest is going to say this. And you have experience with this, so I would love for you to prompt this. Kind of just give us a little bit of directional cues there. And here's one tip. <laughs> just, uh, to, you know, I'm a, they call me a nonfiction television producer, um, unscripted television, just the genre. There's nothing I've ever done on television that's been unscripted, and nor should it be for your podcast, at least written in really good notes. Tips for optimal performance. Know your equipment and familiarize with yourself with it. Uh, in, uh, in fact, I had the privilege of doing a rehearsal last week with Michelle here, and you know we we, we troubleshoot troubleshot about four things that I needed to amend before I came here for this performance. So I appreciate that. Um, introduce your guest and topic smoothly. That is so important for me, and I'm the I can will admit I am actually the worst at it. I'm, as some reason, I am like so clumsy when it comes to introducing people, but there is nothing more sacred and revering to the guest that you have just asked to spend time on your show than to get their name and a proper introduction done. And I will even say, I think it's sloppy hosting and lazy hosting, sloppy hosting. And I've done it, I'm, I've done it myself. When I introduce someone on my show and I say, hey, so tell us about yourself. That's not what we were supposed to do. We're supposed to set them up for the best success and the best shine and share with our audience. We also want to make an invitation to our listening audience or viewing audience why they want to stay 
engaged in listening to the actual show. They want to stay engaged because now you've introduced a really great guest that they're not going to want to turn the channel or flip their thumb on their Instagram account and get distracted doing something else. So this is why you really want to have a very strong intro. And I said, practice, 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 get the name right, get the book that they're promoting, give them the best compliment up front. I, I sometimes morosely say it's like giving somebody their obituary lead. <laughs> you know, mine was like Jackie Jordan, two times Emmy nominated television producer and New York Times bestselling author. It's like something like that, but it's worth it to give it. So um, with your guest for optimal performance, focus on storytelling and then pay attention to timing. Timing is significantly important and that is a host art. So part of your pre-interview, what you'll listen to is like, is this guest a quick storyteller or are they kind of short and brief? And that will help you also understand how you need to drive the show. We're paying attention to time. Oh, you want to ask something? Yeah, someone asked, and I think this is a good place to jump in with that. What's a good lead-off question for that pre-interview with that potential guest, since we're talking about the pre-interviews there? Yeah, so, um, you know, so if we're going to do a topic like, uh, so we're going to do, um, well, it, I, if we're going to do a topic, I'll just use Avery Mann since I brought him up. So we talk about uh, child trafficking. I hadn't really spoken. I followed his work, but I hadn't spoken to him physically probably in 15 years. And I followed his work and I read his stuff. And But what I wanted to, what I needed to get a sense from is also how child trafficking had changed since he was at, like, on a collective level from the time he was at the National Association of Center uh, for Missing Children to his, starting his own business, like had it become more, people become more aware of it? Had the police become more aware of it? So I just, I kind of needed to get a temperature on a lot of things that I wasn't educated and nor would I, would I be, but I needed to make sure that as a host, I was going to bridge the gap. So when I, was, when I spoke with uh, Avery on the, the phone, I, you know, I asked him because his current company works closely with police. You know, I, and I, so I asked him what, you know, what had changed within policing, whether it was FBI or local police services towards um, trafficking. And he was able to confirm my hunch was that the education process within the police divisions um, towards trafficking and what to look for had like the consciousness around that had highly accelerated since we had worked way back, you know, 15 years ago. So I hope that answered the question. So I was kind of looking for some of the gaps because also you want to get when you, as a great host, what you want from the guests is you don't want to work your content out on your show. You want to work your content out during the pre-interview and then perform a great show. You want to give like the greatest storytelling, nuts and bolts and, and juice during the show, but you don't want to work out the kinks of little things that you could have simply asked and then contextualize. So much of hosting is contextualizing a question. You know, Avery, when you were back at the Ch Na National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, you know, the FBI task force were, were quite different than they are operate now today you know, is, is the way to contextualize a question. So I hope that answered that. Um, so knowing your equipment, uh, practice, practice, practice. Um, I, for me, I'm like a techno, I'm like slow on the techno. I'm a, I'm a late start, a late adopter. So I like simplicity. Like I just keep it simple for me, keep it simple for me. But Introducing your guest and your topic doesn't need to be complicated. So write out your introductions and your exits. You know, a lot of people, will, um, also I find this a little lazy. So they'll say, uh, you know, Avery, what's your, you know, so Avery, tell us what your website is. You know, and then you get, you, you know, often a guest will stumble. It's www.sos, you know, 360.com. Like you don't, you, you want to be able to give them the end compliments. So Practice, uh, you know, I have to practice ahead of time. You should be me with my staff. I'm like running the names by them. For some reason, that's just, it's, it's very clunky for me. But I also know the significance and the importance of the mastery around that. Um, so focus on storytelling, pull stories from the pre-interview and prompt the guests to tell their own stories. You can say things like, when we spoke earlier, I learned. Can you share? It's a great way to prompt them. But don't tell the stories for them. 
And um, I have to do, when I do media training from our guests for clients, I have to teach them this, is to not allow a host to steal your story. And a lot of hosts will do that because they feel, for a lot of reasons, it's not nefarious. It's usually unintentional. Or they know it's a great story and they're just telling it. But, you know, you don't want to allow a, a guest a host to tell your story, but you want to set your guest up for a great storytelling. Um, personal and relevant stories often produce engaging and relatable content. I'm a big believer. So um, I will ask my um, my guests, give me a couple anecdotes. You know, we work with like one of our guests right now is a medical doctor, and she does um, she does um, micro she does um, biopsies, fine needle aspiration biopsies. Okay, that's already so complicated. But she can diagnose thyroid cancer, breast cancer, like in the in the moment from after a biopsy. You don't have to wait for it. And so she's got a really unique specialty. But she is such a doctor and so clinical in her storytelling that I, I that when I'm prepping her for her uh, appearances as a guest, I often have to remind her, remember, you're a mother and a humanitarian. So tell us stories you know, that are pers you know, that are humanitarian about your work in medicine, not just the medicine. So that is my way of working with her to get her to tell engaging and relatable content. Because when she gets going in medicine, she's like up here and I'm like, I don't even know what she's talking about. <laughs> I know she's smart, but I don't know what she's talking about. But if she can make it personal and relatable, and that's part of what we're doing as producer hosts for our podcasts. Um, paying attention to timing. Uh, timing is very, very different, um, whether it's a three-minute interview or a seven-minute interview. It may not feel like it is. Um, as I got to tell Michelle last week during our, um, our rehearsal was that I, I started as a radio broadcaster first, and here I was with names. The tennis player, Ivan Isevich, was a tennis player. I could not get his name out of my mouth. I was like, Ivan Ikovich, Ivan Ikovich. But the one thing I also learned in doing radio was that, you know, you'd find a, a certain song and, you know, for five minutes that would play for five minutes. And I knew that was my bathroom break. So time can be very, 30 seconds can be an infinite time. And, you know, when you're waiting for a conference call to start in these uh, uh, remote working days and nobody's on, nobody's on, three minutes can feel like an eternity. So really having an, an, an internal idea of what time is. And it's important as you pace the content of the guest for your show. And that's why timing is really important. So when listening to other podcasts, note how long the interview lasts and you know, what, what this, how long the segment lasts. But as, as hosts, part of the timing as we're relating it to the getting out the uniqueness of our guest is that we are, we want to, we want to know what the story arc is, what we want to get out. If we've got six minutes, where do we want to be? Like, how do we want to get into it? How do we want to peak and how do we want to wrap it up? And that's what, um, that's what really hosting is. And everybody's like, I want to be a host. But that to me is the art of hosting. Handling awkward guests in the moment. So if you are comfortable with the content of the guest and you know where the story wants to go and this, the guest is matching this overall theme from the show that you are producing and you're paying attention to the timing of the the moment you can handle awkward moments when they come up with a guest and uh we had one and i knew it was his first time his first appearance and we had a tech we were technologically a few minutes late and i knew he was nervous and waited but right in the middle of the interview with my two co-hosts the guest was like i gotta go i see a fly on my wall boom <laughs> and cut it right out and it like took us all a moment to even catch up to what just happened. I was like, I think we just lost a guest. And it was one of my most serious, awkward guest moments, um, actually uh, in the most recent Zoom world that I had experienced. But it was, um, you know, how we handled it is we collected ourselves and we continued on with the content of the conversation and we made it, you know, more personal to the three of us that were left in the call. Um, and that's just one of many, um, from television, I can remember, um, I had a husband and a wife on talking about real estate and it was a live show in New York city. And the wife was a talker during the pre-interview and the husband was quite silent. But when we got to the live television show, she started bobbing. And I was like, 
I don't know if she feels well. She just kind of started bobbing. So for whatever happened, that was really awkward, but her husband who had been super silent on the pre-interview now stepped in and just carried the content while she kind of bobbed back and forth. And I think it honestly, it was just nerves. So, you know, awkward guest moments happen, but if you're secure in the content and what your overall communication is for the theme of the show, and you've done your homework as a host, and you're not walking in flying with it, you can mostly handle anything. And since at TV Guestbert, we book so often um, our, our guests, um, on the show, on different shows, we know, like, we know a seasoned host. We're like, oh, we really like doing, you know, the Carol Lieberman show because she's done, she's been doing this for 20 years. And even though this guest is new, we know she'll be able to carry it. Um, and so hosting is quite a skill that um, I think sometimes is underrated and over glamorized, quite frankly. Plan post-production. Um, if you're not doing a live broadcast, then you might have to edit or uh, build that into a release schedule. And if you do do a post-production on a show, you can consider hiring a, a professional editor. And of course, you can do software edits yourself. If you do a live podcast, it, it is what it is. But you know, when you do a lot of live podcasts, you often get, um, I see this all the time on the podcast, you know, it's like, hi, hi, uh, um, are we on? Can you see me? Like the first five or six minutes are spent with them trying to figure out if the technology and the bandwidth are all working. So, you know, I always like say like, let's not, let's not like pay, let's not make these things bigger. Like, let's just kind of get right into the storytelling of it. Again, technology forgiving, let's keep it content driven. And that's a way to carry some of those awkward moments when they come through. The final version of a post-production show, of course, is you can edit the content with your overall message and topic in mind. Since we shoot for broadcast television at, at a 46 minute, uh, we do, about, I think as we do about four, four, four segments, 46 minute television show. And then each one of those segments becomes their individual podcast. And then we, we micro content the rest of it for social media. And because we have the ability to edit, we will rearrange content to have a smoother flow. We don't, we don't manipulate what anybody says, but we'll rearrange the chunks of the content so that if you're watching the whole broadcast, it has a smoother content flow if it wasn't um, executed that way. And that is an advantage of, of post-production, but we don't, we don't manipulate or change what anybody says, but we'll, we'll create it so that for the viewer, it's a, it's, a, it's a smoother watch as opposed to a clunkier, wait, we were talking about this, we, we went to here kind of moment. That's the advantage of doing post-production. 